Hi, I'm Levi, and I'd like to begin by telling you a quick story. Not too long ago, I made a video that I wasn't looking forward to. It was a video announcing the end of the Quailgun project, which is a project that I know a lot of people were very engaged with, and what drew a lot of people to my channel to begin with. In the video, I talked about some of my final thoughts on the projects, and I said that one of the main reasons I was ending the project is just because I didn't have the proper equipment, namely an oscilloscope. But at the end of the day, I didn't want to drag people along. If I wasn't going to work on the project, I wanted people to know about it. So I followed through with the video. What I like to do is upload them on Saturday nights and then schedule them to post on Sunday mornings. I'll schedule them for like 9 in the morning and then I'll sleep in Sunday morning and wake up to a video with a handful of views. And that is exactly what I did with this video. Except when I woke up, I was greeted by a new $15 patron. And this was very exciting. If you don't know, I have a Patreon account which allows you to pledge money to me uh, to help support me and my projects. So I have three tiers, three, six, and $15. Um, the interesting thing, I guess, about the $15 tier is that it doesn't actually give you anything. It's the same as a $16 tier, just more expensive. I thought maybe there's a chance that someone would just want to give me more money, so I made the $15 tier. And I don't expect that tier to get much of any use, but it did. I woke up to a new $15 patron, I was super happy. Especially since I expected to potentially lose patrons, lose subscribers from this video. Later that day though, I returned to my computer and I checked my email in which I found a message. And that message was from the new patron, the one that I had gotten that morning. And the patron was asking how much I wanted to spend on an oscilloscope. And I told him that I didn't really want to cheap out and that if I was gonna get one, I wanted to spend around $1,000 on it. I left the computer and I went about with the rest of my day. I came back once again to find another email, another message from that same patron. I opened up the message and this patron simply asked, what's your PayPal? And I was kind of freaked out. I, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. So I responded and I gave the patron my PayPal and I said, I don't need any grand gesture. You're supporting me enough being a $15 patron. Please don't feel obligated to help me in any way. And then not too much time passed. I look down at my phone and I see a PayPal notification for $1,000. And I just laid down on the ground and tried to catch my breath. And with it was an incredibly kind note. The patron wants to remain anonymous and they don't even care if I finish the Quelligan project or not. They just want to help people to inspire others. Their only ask is if and when I get to the point where I can do the same and I can pass it along that I do so. And I can't express how grateful I am for this. Yes, absolutely, I will pass it on. And I can't wait to do so, but I've still got to get to that point first. But yeah, so I got $1,000 to spend on an oscilloscope and spend I did. In fact, I bought a $1,300 oscilloscope. Actually, it's a $1,500 one, but I got it for $1,300. I couldn't resist some of the upgrades. Got a power cord. USB 2.0, I think. Four passive pros. A manual. And we take it out. Oh, it's not light. <laughs> it kind of needs the handle. I gotta figure out where to plug it in. Okay, is there an on button? Oh, there is an on button. <gasps> oh. oh my goodness. Oh, it's so cool. Damn, that is an oscilloscope. Well, there it is. This is my oscilloscope. It is beautiful. It's like, it, it's pretty much the coolest thing I've ever seen. This thing is amazing. First of all, it's massive. Here's my hand for comparison. This thing 
is like 15 inches wide. This is a nine inch screen. This is the Regal MSO 5104. And it comes with a whole bunch of bells and whistles. Like, you know your oscilloscope is cool when it has a button for apps. So this is a digital oscilloscope. It has four analog channels and up to 16 digital channels. It's a 100 megahertz scope and it has a maximum sample rate of eight giga samples per second. And I'd like you to think about that for a second. If I told you that I had a machine that could take eight million samples per second, you'd be pretty impressed. I know you would, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying eight giga samples. That means eight billion samples in one second. That's kind of crazy. Who am I kidding? That's super crazy and makes me extremely happy. This whole thing weighs a ton, um, which is just a testament to uh, how good it is. If your piece of uh, testing equipment weighs a lot, you know it's quality. Not only is this a really big nine inch screen, but it's also a touch screen. I don't necessarily even need to use all of these beautiful knobs over here. So like I said, this guy comes with a bunch of apps on it and there was a bundle when I bought this, so I got even more apps to go with it that would have been hundreds of dollars extra. There's a bunch of math functions, there's power analysis, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Frankly, I don't know what most of it is because I don't have a lot of experience with oscilloscopes. And this machine also has a built-in waveform generator, which is so cool. And you might even be able to see right here, there's a record button so hypothetically, um, I can just straight up record this screen and then maybe put that into videos. I'll have to figure that out. I think that could be really cool. Moral of the story is that this thing has so many features. It's, it's beyond an entry level machine. It's like more mid level, which I am so happy to have. And I guess I should maybe explain what this thing is if you aren't familiar. So if you haven't caught on, this is an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is essentially a voltmeter, except on steroids, on many, many steroids. Instead of just telling you the average voltage of something, it'll tell you the voltage up to 8 million times in one second with microvolt accuracy. So it's no longer about reading what the voltage currently is, and instead about seeing the characteristics of the voltage over time, how it acts. One of the reasons that electrical engineering can be difficult is that the forces you're working with are invisible. In almost every circumstance, you can't see electricity and you can't see magnetic fields, but somehow you have to manipulate them. The magic of an oscilloscope is that it's a window into that world. Essentially, this device allows me to see electricity in real time. A modern marvel, and it is beautiful. So why don't I show you an example? Currently, you can see this yellow line here. You can see that it's just a line here. That's because I don't have anything hooked up, so the voltage is constantly at zero. So here I have a brushless DC motor. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to hook up the ground of my passive probe to one of these leads, and then I'll hook up the actual probe part with this handy little spring-loaded mechanism to another lead. So now if I turn this motor, the changing magnetic field should induce current across the electromagnets, creating a voltage that we can see on here. There you go. It doesn't last super long, but you can see that the oscilloscope is measuring the voltage, and it's looking like a sine wave. When this is at speed, I'm generating a sine wave that is measured across the uh, across the leads. I'm gonna grab another probe here and stick it on channel two. Now I'm gonna ground this, this I'm gonna ground this probe to the same channel I grounded channel one to, and I'm gonna stick the probe end on the other uh, the other electrode, the one that I haven't used yet. Oh yeah, there you go. When I spin this, you can see both voltages across the two um, electromagnet sets and you can see those offset sine waves. So if I were to just hook a multimeter up to this and try and read the voltage off here, it'd tell me almost nothing. But here, I can, I can measure frequencies and peak voltages. I can measure the, uh, the how offset the two, the two sine waves are. I can learn things about them based off of how close to a real sine wave they are, different characteristics. This can tell me so much. And don't try and tell me that it's not just one of the most beautiful things to see those lines, especially the colored lines. Oh, it's so good. 
Okay, I'm gonna try something else here. And I'm gonna pull out a breadboard. I'm gonna try something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. So here I have an Arduino. I've programmed it with the standard blank sketch, except that I've removed the delays. So right now, the pin 13 is turning on and off as fast as it can. Now, I've never known how fast this is exactly, but with this oscilloscope, I should be able to measure the maximum uh, frequency. Oh, there it is. We've got this weird thing on the oscilloscope because we've got to zoom in on what we want to see here. I think I can just press the auto button and it'll go in where I want it to. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. Oh, wow. That's the square wave of the maximum frequency that my, um, that my, my Arduino can produce. And now if I want to learn more about this, it's simple as just pressing the measure button up here. I want to know the frequency, so I'll do frequency there. I want to see the top voltage, see the duty cycle too. Let's do voltage max and voltage min, and then I'll stick the base in there too. It's showing me these numbers down at the bottom here. So just turning those things on, I can see a whole bunch of data about this. I can see that the duty cycle of this square wave is 47.2%. And what I wanted to figure out is how fast it was. I can see it right here. It's 178 kilohertz and it's holding very steady there. Let's see here if I can turn this on. That is a period length of 6.7 microseconds. US is microseconds, right? I think so. I can also see that the plateau voltage here is 4.02 volts, which is interesting because this is a five volt device. That V max is around 4.5 volts, so that means that the peak here, the little spike at the very beginning, goes about half a volt above the plateau voltage. But is that not the coolest thing? I all I had to do is just wire this thing up, and now I know all this information, this stuff that I've wanted to know for for as long as I've worked with Arduino. Yeah, I probably could have Googled it, but now I can do it experimentally. And this is only the very beginning of what I can do. There's so much more stuff like this, where this device, I can use it in a really simple manner, but that'll make my life so much easier. So what I'm trying to say here is this, this beautiful device, this is a game changer, an absolute game changer. I am extremely fortunate to have this in my possession and I am extremely thankful to be given the opportunity to get it. With this incredible device, I'll be able to take on a lot more challenging projects. This thing will allow me to truly diagnose issues. If something's not working, I can look more in depth at what's actually happening with the voltages and the waveforms, and I can use that to inform fixes. So this really does open up the world of possibilities for future projects, and yes, that does mean I'll be able to do the Coilgun project. I'd like to talk about that real quick, the Coilgun project. I don't want to jump into it headfirst, like I've been doing in the past. I put so much time into it already, I want to do it justice. So what that means is when I'm ready to return to the Coilgun project, I'm not just going to start designing it. I will begin by developing a test rig, and I will test out different ideas, different designs, um, different setups, different circuits on a very small scale, so lower power and probably only one, two, maybe three stages at a time. Then when I'm happy with that, I can try and scale things up. I definitely will return to the Coilgun project and this beautiful machine will make that possible, but I'm not going to rush myself. I'm going to allow myself the time to do something that I'm proud of. So yeah, this is my oscilloscope. I'll put a link to this thing in the, in the description if you're interested in buying this. I felt like I did quite a bit of research and I looked at every oscilloscope I could find and this has some of some stats that for the money really outperform anything else on the market. It doesn't have the highest bandwidth, which is generally regarded as the most important statistic. For $1,000, I think you can find an oscilloscope that gets up to 200 megahertz. Again, this is only 100 but I'm not generally gonna be working in those really high frequencies. This has a lot of features elsewhere. For example, the eight giga samples per second, the four channels, the 16 digital channels, the nine inch screen, that's also a touch screen. It has a lot of other stuff that makes up for the little bit less um, bandwidth frequency. 
I'm super happy with it and I can't imagine any project I'd be working on that this would not be enough. I expect this to serve me well into the future. If you can't tell, I am ecstatic. This thing, like I said, it's a game changer and it's, I don't know, it's amazing. I really get more enjoyment out of working with electronics than anything else. And to have such a powerful tool at my disposal, it's, it feels so empowering. So I'm kind of high on life right now. I'm enjoying the ride and the future is bright. The, the projects are boundless. And if you want to further support me, uh, you can do so monetarily via my Patreon. There will be a link in the description for that. I apologize for this video not being terribly eventful or informative or anything. Um, but it's been so fun getting to know this machine. Well, get out there, make something for yourself, and I will see you later. Bye.